So the time is now 7.36, and I'm calling the monthly meeting of the Downers Grove Public Library Board of Trustees to order. Caitlin, can you proceed with the roll call, please? Yes. Uh, Trustee Jordy is absent today. We have Trustee Dadani here. Trustee Fortin here. Trustee Humphreys here. Trustee Stevenson here. Here. Thank you very much. We're now on to agenda item number three. Welcome to our visitors. We appreciate your interest in the library. <laughs> um, we're now on to agenda item number four, the approval of last month's minutes. Does anybody have any questions or comments regarding last month's minutes? Payroll of the year will be like the 29th 
15th or something of December. And normally, they're, those are a little well, in, in the way, in yeah. well, the way that I would look at it too is with that payroll that comes in January 3rd, it's essentially paying for time that, for the prior year. That's exactly but right. Yeah. 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 So yeah. That's why that's why I don't know if I would have even I mean I going back in time whether I would have even budgeted for it because then it throws you off potentially for the following year. year. Exactly. So it's just maintaining kind of a smooth, you know. It's it's a weird quirk of the calendar and I think it's every years or something you get 27 in point instead of 26. Well, yeah, that's why I was like, is that what's throwing it Maybe, you know what, maybe that oh, year. We should study, <laughs> study the calendar and maybe it happens in eight years or something. Yeah. You have that one extra day. There's that rotation. Yeah. Um, the, um, well, in, in the fact that we were our revenues, I think, were up by 120,000, and our expenses were under by 280,000. Yes. So if there's 130,000, I think that this payroll that we have to be able to, you know, to get it done. Okay, does anybody have any questions or comments on the financial matter? I think I, you know, you had them on the invoices of the note. Yeah. 
Exactly. And the, the smaller libraries that would generally take used equipment usually don't have our ID <coughs> systems installed. So they don't have the, the tags that <coughs> the basis of that system. So there's kind of like two different invoices, one for the price of the devices and one for the service. Oh, those are two different agenda items. Okay. Uh, the, the purchase of the six self-checks is um, item 8A, and then 8B is our annual maintenance service and maintenance contract with Biblioteca, and so that'll be our next Right, because there was a line in here for one annual with those devices. Yeah. Well, and one question I did add, which this kind of blends both the yes. items, but the you know, yes. Julie can explain this probably better than I could, but the ba basically we're getting a year of service when you purchase the new units. We, the, we are paying, or at least right, the, we're, we are paying for service on the current units, but once the new units are installed, we'll get kind of a prorated credit back yes. for the amount of service that we needed or that we initially approved for the current units. And they won't do it until the units are actually installed and they use the install date. So they quote you your renewal with the old units still on there and they won't give it to you without it. Do you know do you know when the new units would be like we approved it? Or how quickly would they be? Generally it happens within a couple of weeks, but it's all at the vendor's uh, availability. So uh, I would say within a month of the time that we send in this, but we don't know until we submit the approved quote, and then they give us install dates. And it's these like seven items at close to thousand dollars would come yes. off essentially. Yes. Yes. Not to blame. Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. okay. Well, I mean, that's okay. That's okay. They do. They do yeah. blend together. Manufactures our the um, many, many libraries use. Yes, and um, it's the automated materials handling system. So it is. This is the sorter itself um, for the maintenance contract. All of the tagging equipment that's used in the technical services department. So it's all part of one system that works together. So it is a proprietary. Installation. 
the remainder of that contract is for the sorter. It's everything from the software that runs it to the software that runs our, um, our pace um, And so it does encompass quite a bit of equipment that's listed there. Well, and, and, and I was asking about the installation date because I was hoping yes. that it was in before when it says exactly. don't pay any. It's yeah. actually $14,000 off of uh, Yes, yeah, they'll, they'll charge you. So if, say we get them installed March 1st, then you will only have uh, March, two months of that on the bill. So they'll prorate for 2021 from March 1st to our renewal.
doing our next big update and looking at the capital projects and what we've managed to get done within our regular budget and this new information as well and project going forward and do some updated projections. And so for next year, we will have a better idea of what to put in there for that BAV box and then we'll be able to uh, extrapolate that going forward. So uh, that is actually one of the projects that he is doing while he's on light duty is yeah. updating the paperwork. The, um, well, and I also appreciate the fact that you pointed out that the, um, the masonry project came in See, so much under budget for 2020 yes. that this is really a, this would have had to come out of the fund at some point. And B, if we're just looking at 2020, this is not going to put us over what our 2020 budget would have been. So the plan is to replace 80 a year? Um, between 6 and 80 years. Between 6 and 80 years. Is this a document that you got? This is um, the variable air. Uh, volume. Volume. Okay. <laughs> Basically, what it is, is it's a smart damper, and it's got a little reheat in it. So the damper opens, and the reheat turns on or not, depending on the temperature of the air at that box. It helps with zone control. Yes. And there's a big fan on the roof, and this is the damper is the yep. up, so the air and it makes sure that if it's somewhere that's far away from the boilers, that the air is still warm coming out of it when it needs to be. So um, when they get old, they start to make noise. Um, as some of you may have remembered at one point, we had a very noisy one in here. You could hear it, eh, that was the damper opening or closing. So yeah, those we have prioritized the um, EAP boxes for replacement this year according to their mean. <laughs> it's so it's interesting of those eight. Sari use the same model number. <laughs> or no, there's two of these. A different sizes. Yeah. 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 And where they are in the system. So are we, we're, so we're you're just approving? So you're just approving that um, this be um, purchased using library capital replacement okay. funds. Okay. We have a motion to approve the use of library capital funds for the purchase of tram VAVs as, as set forth in agenda item 8C. Okay, so um, we have a motion to approve to, to, to use the library capital replacement fund for the purchase of trans day visa mm -hmm. set forth in agenda item 8C. It has been seconded. Caitlin, can you proceed with the roll call, please? Trustee Panarin? Yes. Trustee Humphreys? Yes. Trustee Panarin? Yes. Trustee Panarin? Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. We have approved the use of the library capital replacement fund for the purchase of tram DAVs as set forth in agenda item 8C. We're now on to agenda item 8D, general policy update. I think this will be a quick one. I hope so. <laughs> uh, one of the staff noticed that uh, we did very well in doing the personnel end of the drug free, drug and alcohol free workplace things, but that they, we also needed to reflect um, the legalization of recreational marijuana in our code of conduct. And so it is simply inserting the word marijuana and two commas. Mm -hmm. uh, Second. 
Okay, we have a motion to approve agenda item 8D general policy update section 2.9 code of conduct as set forth in agenda item 8D. Um, it has been seconded. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, please say nay. Okay, we have approved agenda item 8D. Thank you very much. We're now on to agenda item number 9, unfinished business, and it doesn't appear we have any. So then we're on to agenda item number 10, the library director's report. All right, I have several things to talk about, and then we also have public relations manager Cindy Catree here to talk to you. So we can go in either order, whichever one you would like to do first. Um, let's have Cindy. Whatever you guys want. <laughs> do you want me to like stand? Whatever, however you're most comfortable. Have, have a seat. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm Cindy Tree. I am the PR manager here at the library. So I've been um, in this role here at the library for about a year now, um, but I've been at the library since 2018. So the PR department um, has two other staff members. I have um, my marketing content coordinator, Brian Ruan, and my um, graphic design and display coordinator, Grace Goodwin. And they both came to the library last year after our two previous staff members retired. So it's a very like fresh department. <laughs> we are really, um, you know, navigating how we want to shape this new era of PR. So um, for any of you who are curious, we actually work in that administration, uh, the administration office, like in the back. So feel free to come say hi. Um, so what do we do in PR? In the PR department, we're in charge of marketing the library and some community engagement efforts. So really, we're maintaining the style guide. We're considering the library's brand and reputation and like our persona, for lack of a better term, and everything that goes out into the community. And we really um, oversee that everything stays on brand in the best interest of the library that way. So um, I guess we'll kind of start with marketing. Um, so we handle all of the digital and print marketing um, for the library, and that includes the bi-monthly newsletter discoveries, um, signage for all of the events, um, signage in the library, like you know, going upstairs, that kind of thing. All of the information brochures. I mean, <laughs> um, so if you would have something that's like, how to use Libby, you know, we're the ones who create that. Um, general branding for the library, um, press releases, copy editing, certain things that go out. And then for digital marketing, we do all of the social media. So we handle a Facebook, Twitter, and uh, Instagram. We do all of the website content and design. Um, we do any kind of like posts you might see on like websites like Nextdoor, stuff like that. Um, and then of course like our public podcast. Um, and so really when we're thinking about um, the library's marketing goals and what we're pushing out, we're really looking at the strategic plan and what initiatives and programs directly connect to the strategic plan, what's going to advance on um, those core services and initiatives that we have going on, and we prioritize those first. Um, we consider who our audience is. We really try to like think like a patron for everything we put out there. We try to eliminate library jargon for everybody and make it as accessible as possible to anybody who might be coming in and might not know about the library or its service. Um, and then, of course, we're always thinking of things like reputation management. So if somebody's reviewing us on Yelp, we're the ones who respond. Um, and so to do all of this, it's really important that we have stuff like help ticket systems to make sure that we can stand track all of our projects and um, get everything done in a timely manner. Because yes, we have a lot of customer service for the public, but a lot of our customer service is also internal um, because we serve all of the other departments of the library with things that they as well. And then in terms of community engagement efforts, we handle all of the general outreach. So when you see us at like the farmer's market or the concert series, that's all coordinated by my department. We take care of um, coordinating for the cupboard our little free pantry um, in the cafe. We handle the organization of the month and other um, community partnership initiatives. So let's handle those. And then, of course, working on um, the library's participation in larger community events, kind of like Founders Day, um, and kind of making sure that the library has a beat and a pulse on what else is happening in Dodge Grove 
and that we're aware and just a part of the conversation that's happening. Um, in addition to all of this, we also take care of the rotating displays um, in the library and the um, displays on the side. So really the way it kind of works is Brian takes care of a lot of the marketing aspects on social media, the copy editing, um, and like basic website updates. Grace takes care of the design aspect in terms of like the graphics, and she also takes care of the displays. I take care of a lot in both areas. I help kind of manage the workflow, and then I take care of the communication efforts. Um, so what have we been doing in the last year since we turned over? We started auditing our social media accounts to, um, to really increase engagement and attendance. We completely revamped the Discovery newsletter with like little tweaks that I'm sure the public won't necessarily notice, but hopefully it makes it just easier and more intuitive to use. For example, having um, the program key on every page that the program is on. Um, we redesigned the website, as you guys know, that was a huge project. And we reviewed and updated our program priority lists and figured out how we wanted the rest of the library to be delivering that kind of information to us and like what what their programs are about, um, how they connect to the strategic plan, where their priorities and goals are. And so what we're working on this year is standardizing our general outreach so we have more meaningful interactions, um, targeting specific groups of patrons for our marketing efforts instead of like, the blanket approach, and then um, working on a brand new marketing plan to really tie this all together with a nice pretty bow. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah. Have, um, a very clear goal. Any questions? Cindy is tremendous. She really took the lead on the website mm -hmm. project in particular that That's just great. launched on yes. President's Day and it looks amazing. She worked, um, Paul Regis, our IT manager, was a partner in uh, that project and they just did an amazing job. It looks fantastic. And Res the responsive design is exactly what we were looking for, and I think that they made finding discovery of information a lot easier on the page in general. So um, I think that's just one example of how Cindy and her team have been bringing us really further into the 21st century. So it's been great. Thank you. Thank you. Attended a program on the road trails that Cindy and Christine presented uh, on the uh, primarily uh, on a lot of areas, but the real emphasis on the uh, older programs. Beautifully presented, fun, and it was very well received. Thank you. Congrats, you've been doing a great job. When you mentioned social media, mm -hmm. I heard you say Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, because yes. I know you guys are going to the patrons. And I'm just a, a business person. I use LinkedIn a lot. I don't know sure. if it's something that the library should consider so you get to more business patrons that may forget to use the library. Yeah, I don't know. It was just an idea. <laughs> Not to add something to the plate, just throwing yeah. it out there. No, I appreciate that. You know, we've actually talked a lot about LinkedIn um, and whether or not we feel like one, if we can like handle another social media account. But, um, so we've been talking about how we can target like business um, library card holders and you know, just like business uh, patrons in general. And something that's really exciting is we're going to be moving forward with um, a new um, email system that will actually let us very easily segment out our business library card holders' emails. So we can directly email them instead of really having to go to our simulation department and ask them to run Port and then import those separately. So hopefully, like yeah, that I just I well. figure there's probably some benefit to um, someone who may know of grants or different donations mm -hmm. or things like that. That if you ever broke down your numbers, I've never used Instagram, so I don't know. If you look at maybe your Instagram numbers are much bigger than that, I'm guessing, but if that happens to be your smallest one and you run a trial on LinkedIn and say, mm -hmm. oh wow, we actually got yeah. a lot more presence view and things like. So, doing great. <laughs> it seems like every time we see something new that's happening in the library, Cindy's name is 
either you know, prominently displayed or within the group of people who are working diligently in the same. So, thank you. And if you need anything from the board or you have new ideas that you want to present, we're always welcome to that. Okay, members ready to come on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan did a great job when he went on the podcast. Yeah, he's always right. Really so, we didn't have to say our notes. Did I remember No, it was in yeah. Although I didn't really, I didn't really advertise until after I listened to it. I, <laughs> I told you, I was telling you about like sounding mad. So <laughs> no, it, it was actually really fun to um, kind of go through the process, and they know that like there's an open, like a reverse open for the tape. Like I can go back on whatever you want to do, <laughs> um, and discuss topics, library or not, whatever you would like me to talk about. So just give me a day, and I'll brush up on. Sounds good. <laughs> and Ed will always give you a good edit. Yes. <laughs> that's, 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 that is so true. Ed well, is like sure the magician who makes us all sound good. <laughs> Thank you. We're now on to the library director's report. Yes. Um, and I have the website on my list to, to talk about. And just to highlight that and what a wonderful upgrade it has been. Um, I also wanted to tell you about the presentation that Cindy and I made last night to the Human Services Ad Hoc Committee of the Village. Um, this committee is, they've made a recommendation to the Village Council to um, reconstitute the Standing Human Services Commission that was um, and in 20, removed 2010, removed um, what, whatever you want to say. Um, <laughs> they, so uh, they have they made a recommendation to the village council to them send them back and ask them to be a little more specific in the items that they um, recommended that the Standing Human Services Commission take on. And we were fortunate to be there last night with um, Superintendent Dr. Hank Feely and Superintendent Dr. Kevin Russell, um, who gave a wonderful presentation about our school districts and what they are doing in human services. And then we were able to piggyback and talk about all of the things that the library is doing. And I think the, the committee members were absolutely astounded by the breadth of library programs and services and the fact that it's not just a repository for books anymore, that public libraries are places where you access information and resources, and that holds true for people in need of any kind of human services. And because we are a place for everyone, we really do serve every single one of the constituencies that they're working to support um, with reconstituting the human services. So it was a wonderful conversation, and I know that we will be um, looking to work with them in the future as the Standing Human Services Commission back into being, we think. Did you say that I've been through the Huge County Community Services? No. Um, no, this is okay. the Villages, um, and they are having the DuPage County Human Services, whatever they call that department now. Yeah. Because it's our, our website. Are it's presenting to the com, to that human services ad hoc committee next month, I believe. I believe it's the it's someone from the county and then the townships are presenting next month. And what the, the human services ad hoc committee is looking for at this point is who is already out there doing this good work and how can they Look, coordinate yeah. and look at what specific role that that Standing Human Services Commission could take in in that area. So, is this is really a local issue. Like, is that more of a state? Thing? No, this is really about what the people of what people in Downers Grove who are right. need human services, right. social services where those gaps are, right, right. what are the needs that aren't already being right, filled, right. or what services are being missed, need more prominent referral, need you know, 
to be a little more visible, visible in our community. So that it's a really great conversation to start, and I think um, that we really did realize and help them realize yesterday that the library is going to be a really fantastic part in moving this forward. So. Yes, yes, and as a matter of fact, Octavia Nyland, our social work intern, joined us for that presentation last Absolutely. night to, as a, as a listener, um, Octavia is just getting started. She's been with us just over a month now. She is working on her learning objectives for her internship, and she will be starting office hours in March. Um, the first things that she's doing is a resource guide for our librarians to help better to help them refer people to services a little more effectively. And then she will be working on a needs assessment survey with library patrons to help identify what are those what are their service needs and how we can better serve them in those ways. Yeah, um, that was Session of the beginning of this millennium when uh, the village pulled back to what they referred to as core services. And, and, and a lot of what they, no, but uh, a number of programs that were cut because the money wasn't there, they felt, and they also felt that they were part of the core services of the village. But they were very useful in productive services. And at the time, there was hope from many people, including some of the people on the council, that some of the things that they were cutting down would be restored. The so, Human Services Commission, while you know, a, a, a noticeable part of their work is economic based, uh, not all, by any means. And even though Downers Grove is an African community, homeless in the community. Uh, we also find ourselves in people who need human services, coordination of agencies there. And uh, the your point, the um, just as we do in the homeless, the the county and the councils and the municipalities work together and the pieces of the, of the issue and the same is true of the human services. Health department, was active in it, townships have a new service, and uh, our villages, uh, as far as the municipalities, there are many local agencies within the community, a lot of church based groups and uh, things like that. But we lack some coordination. Yeah. Yeah. 
was. Standing room only. <laughs> The mayor's comments the value of public art in the community. Quite honestly, it really was it was so right on top. Wonderful event. Thank you all for coming and supporting us in, in that. Um, it's, it's a wonderful artwork and we're happy to have it and we're happy to have something on the wall in the place where we made it a whole year. Houses and homes and presents the only collection of public art in the world. It's an opportunity and responsibility. And then my final point um, to, for discussion tonight is I wanted to talk to you all a little bit about your feeling on the uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion trajectory discovery proposal that was included in your packet. Um, this is, would be working with Rashida Grant Washington, who is a consultant who has worked with the Oak Park Public Library on a similar tra trajectory. Basically, this is a, a listening opportunity for um, her as a, a third party consultant to come in and listen to what the board has to say on this topic, to what the staff has to say, and do a couple of community listening events and then really craft something that a, a trajectory, a, a plan forward for us as an organization. Um, we're very excited by the prospect. Um, the number one issue we seem to be having with this right now is scheduling. Um, the first thing that we discovered is that for our initial dates that we wanted to get started, we can't even get into our own meeting room. So that's going to be our first big thing. But one of the things that she would like to do is at least an hour listening with you as the board. Um, and we have discussed both the idea of doing that on the weekend or the idea of doing that immediately before or immediately after a board meeting. Um, we have some opportunities coming up. Uh, Right now, it looks like the March agenda is very light. Um, the April agenda may be similarly light, so this is kind of the right time of year for that. Um, she is, for the community listening events, she was looking at an evening and a weekend, so if we were thinking that the board wanted to do a weekend rather than a board meeting night, um, we could try to take that, that together. But I wanted to get your opinions on timing. Well, what did you uh, learn about her? This was through a conversation that actually started with, um, as you know, there were some conversations recently about um, diversity, equity, and inclusion. We had we had some training at our September um, in-service day been a topic that we really, that has been in our strategic plan, but we really struggled with how to move forward. And it was a conversation with David Sellin, uh, the executive director of the Oak Park Public Library and I were having about how, about moving forward. And he talked about this consultant and the work that she had, had done with them on this they're doing exactly this process with them to help them find their path forward. Because it's really about identifying where, what's our starting point? Where, where are we now as a board, as a staff, as a community, so that the path forward becomes more clear? No, I like the fact that she did. Um, the person who, uh, well, we essentially learned about it from someone who's gone through the process. I and mean, that exactly. is, that's important. Theater yeah. Has anyone read the book, where does the library have her book? Soul Force, Seven Pivots for its current community. She has an event tomorrow night in Oak Park. Yes. I think it's really, uh, so important. 
I would be happy to do it before or after a board meeting or on the weekend, but my preference would probably be before then. Yeah, I, I think so too. Yeah. I think so too. We already have this night. Um, for the community programs? For both, for staff and for the community programs. When it comes to staff and programs, Yeah. 
in uh, programs that she could not get the program she wanted. I know. I, I she wanted. Um, we will be having um, a uh, Harriet Tubman program in September, and we have also applied for a grant that includes a museum display and a speaker on African American poetry. Um, that if we receive this grant would also be in September. So. Well, I'm happy to see that on the table also.